So moving on to another type of variability, we have three measures that go together. The sum of squares, which you always get first, which can give you the variance, also the mean square, which can get you to the standard deviation, which is probably the most common and most interpretable measure of variability here. And so if we're doing this based on like the hand math, you have to get the SS to get these because this equation ends up in these equations. Now, of course, nowadays with computer programs, you can ask just to get the standard deviation and it'll spit it out because it's done this math in the background. But let's look at what these equations are and how they build on one another. The sum of squares is the sum of the squared deviation scores. So this is a deviation score, how a score differs from the mean. And then we're gonna square it, hence sum of squares. Now, if we were to write this equation for a population, we would use mu instead of m, but the equation, the math, is the same. Now, we would use that as the numerator of variance. Variance is going to be, and I'm going to use here first the sample notation, the square deviations over n minus 1 for a sample. Okay, now here is where you get a difference. For a sample, you use n minus 1, which allows variance to be an unbiased estimate because you're estimating the variance, you don't know the true variance, and n minus 1 makes this an unbiased statistic estimate. Now, if you have a population, you won't just write a different notation here. A population actually will change not just the symbol mu, but it will also mean we divide only by n. So that's going to be a difference that's important when you're calculating variance. Now, once you have a variance, the standard deviation really is the same thing. It is really in the variance calculation that the difference occurs. So the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So if the variance is this, we simply square root it. And so these are the standard deviations. So you see that sum of squares is required in all of our calculations. And so we start with sum of squares and then we can progress to calculate the others. So let's practice these. We've seen the equations. We've talked about how they're related. Let's practice these with this set of data. So we're gonna do the calculations now from our data, imagining it's a sample and imagining it's a population. So if we do SS first, SS, we have to get the deviation scores, which means we start by getting the average. So here we would get the average of our scores. So we have five, 10, 15, and we have five scores. So the mean is three, because remember, the mean is sum of scores over N, right? Here, the sum of the scores is 15. The number of scores is five. So this is 15 over five, three. So if we have our mean as three, we're going to take the difference between these. So we need the score minus the mean, and then we're gonna square that. So a deviation score is score minus mean for each value. So we get negative two, we're gonna to have to square it, negative one squared, zero squared, one squared, two squared. So here we get four, we get one, zero, one, and four. So four, four, eight, nine, ten. So we have now gotten 10 is our sum of squared deviations. So our sum of squares here equals 10. And again, we did that by getting the difference between the score and the mean, squaring that value, and then we sum all of those. We add all those together. So sum of squares here is 10. So now the next step would be, well, how do we calculate from this? The variance. Well, if it's a population, 
Population variants will annotate with the sigma, this is a lowercase sigma, not a capital sigma, but that's still sigma, sigma squared. And sigma squared is gonna be that sum of squares value, right, over n, which here is 10 over five is two. So our population variance here is two. Now, if we were to do a sample variance, we'd have sum of squares over n minus one equals 10 over four equals 2.5. And that's important to note, a sample variance will always be larger than a population variance because there's probably more variability in the population than you've captured just in your sample. And that's why that becomes an unbiased estimate by making the estimate of the variance a little larger. So the last thing we could do is we can get the standard deviation. And the standard deviation requires us to square root these things. And that's all we need to do. So it is sigma and s, and it is the square root of sigma squared, which was the variance, or the square root of s squared. So here, it's the square root of two, and here it's the square root of 2.5. And the square root of two is 1.41, if we round to two decimal places, and the square root of 2.5 is 1.58 rounded to two decimal places. And so here, this is how we would obtain sum of squares, variance, and standard deviation from a set of scores.